Welcome back to the morning news. Welcome back to the morning news. Today we are joined by a very special guest. We have impact entrepreneur Miss Norm Denny Ndaki. How are you, ma'am? I'm awesome. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Thank you again for just being on our podcast today. Not a problem. Thank you for having me. And just to get the ball rolling, who is Miss Ndaki? A big initiative you've taken is Agenda Women. And may enlighten us about what Agenda Women is. Okay, so I am an entrepreneur and a mom to two beautiful kids, a um, 16-year-old girl and a 13-year-old boy. Um, I started Agenda Woman in 2018. And really, it was not my intention to create a business at the time, but around 2016, I um, went through a huge transition in my life and I went to social media to kind of try and find uh, my grounding through posting quotes. What I found at the time is I got so much engagement when I would share um, a little bit more about the quotes on my caption. I remember that hashtag, I created a hashtag that was called 30 Days of Awakening. At the end of that period, I, um, I missed the engagement, I missed the interaction I had with my community and I asked my team if they could find a way for me to have maybe two Saturdays in my month where I could sit down with a group of young women to just have a Q&A. They can ask me anything. We could develop the conversation. And really, I did that because I recognized from my own experience how difficult it was to find like-minded people when you are going through personal evolutions and transitions, and even in business, being an entrepreneur now for 11 years. So at that time, I started something called Edit Talks. And really, even that was never meant to be anything except just a conversation with young women. The reason it even became Edit Talks is because on the 1st of March uh, 2016, when I posted a call to action on my social media, for people to let me know if they'd be interested in hanging out, I got a hundred emails that day. And for me, it Mm -hmm. was just an indication of the hunger that people had um, to come together and engage uh, with like-minded people. Fast forward to two years later, I had hosted a couple of events and it was only women who were coming to the events. And through a conversation with my business coach at the time, he asked me why I am not working particularly with then um, women. And I remember I was thinking, ah, it doesn't make sense strategically because I have another business, which is a marketing agency. And um, he just left it at that. He didn't force me. And I walked away and I thought, you know what? Maybe let me start with this particular property and actually be very intentional about making it um, a woman-focused property. And that's how Agenda Woman started. And today it is a registered business, fully operational. And um, at the core of what Agenda Woman is, it's really about, uh, it's, it's really a platform for the modern working woman to help them navigate the evolving dynamics of being a working woman through content that helps them to work smart and live well. And we do this through the community's shared experiences in order to inspire confidence. The platform has multiple pillars. You know, we have the the website where we share our blog content. We have our social media where we share more content there. There is some exciting developments that we can't wait to share with everyone in uh, 2021. But um, it's been really an evolution led by what we were getting as feedback from the community. I understand, I understand. And... As you spoke, you said it's a platform for modern women. So what does feminism mean to you? And what are some initiatives you've taken within Agenda Women towards gender equality? So for me, feminism and anyone who is labeled a feminist is really people who are passionate and committed to gender equality. I know that feminism is often frowned upon and seen as a movement that is anti-male, but any person that is for gender equality is a feminist. 
for me, gender equality is critical. And the pillar that we focus on around gender equality is economic emancipation of women. What we do at Agenda Women is through every opportunity that we get to create um, a gateway for women to be able to access any sort of um, content that helps them to figure out how to be economically emancipated, we swing towards the direction. The developments that we're actually making for 2021 are going to be primarily focused on how do we make women empowerment tangible? And women empowerment for me is gender equality, right? And I'm a big believer that one of the ways that we can really impact gender equality is through making women economically independent. We focus on entrepreneurship as one of the avenues that we want to really make impact in. If we figure out how to help women build successful businesses, successful, sustainable businesses that are operating in the six figure area, we are going to see a change in how women make even social decisions. We all know that a lot of times women find themselves in situations where they are either abused by their partners. We know gender-based violence is big in South Africa. When we look at the crux of, of a lot of the situations that women find themselves in where they are not empowered, the issue is they are not able to sustain themselves. Whether that is through not having education or through have not being uh, employed or through not having a way to build successful businesses. That is our focus. Over the years, we want to introduce some aspect of taking girls to school through Agenda Women. Because for us, education matters for young girls. Um, women, it, it matters for women to be employed. And if they're not employed, it matters that we help them to run successful businesses so that they can have autonomy around their decisions for their life. So for us, gender equality really, uh, the area we want to impact is economic emancipation for women. I really admire the idea and the advancements we made towards women empowerment. It's really good. And Rodney Crawford once said, and I quote, being challenged in life is inevitable behind defeat. And you've been a businesswoman since 2009. I was looking it up and I believe that along anyone's journey, obstacles are inevitable. And may you tell us about one failure you've had and what you learned from that failure. You know, um, it's so interesting you asked me that question. I'm currently reading, we have a book club uh, um, at, at Agenda Woman, and the book that we're reading this month in January is called um, The Obstacle is the Way. And uh, the book depicts many leaders' stories and the obst obstacles that they faced and how you can turn obstacles into positive um, opportunities for you to grow or learn. I was very fortunate in my 20s. My first business, I was 25. I always say when I tell the story, I almost turned everything I touched into gold. Around yeah. 30, when I got into my 30s and, and, and 31, I started my initial businesses from looking at just opportunity, right? I recognized there was opportunity and I went for it. One of the work I do now is coaching women, coaching entrepreneurs who are either starting businesses or are wanting to scale their businesses in order to, to, to generate more revenue. And the, the, the work I do in coaching is really help them focus on planning, to get as much planning as you possibly can because you'll never be fully um, prepared for, for, for studying anything. But there is really merit in having a plan. When I started my businesses at the beginning, I didn't spend a lot of time planning. I went for opportunity. And what I found over time is as the businesses grew, I was not ready for that growth because I had not preempted the growth and I had not really been deliberate around how I want those businesses to grow. So around my 30s, I had taken up a lot. You know, I had taken up a lot of clients. I wasn't even intentional about how big do I want to grow? You know, do I want to be boutique? Do I want to be a, a big organization, maybe like an Ogilvy? But around my 30s, yeah. I'd taken up a lot of clients. I had do not done a, uh, created a clear plan around onboarding um, employees, creating company culture, all those critical elements around building a successful business. 
a lot started going wrong um i had unhappy employees because they were not feeling motivated there wasn't clear direction we didn't have a vision that was bigger than the work that we were doing and if you have unhappy employees you're not going to have a successful business and training out employees bringing people in um letting people go it doesn't create a healthy sustainable environment for growth and that was when i encountered my first failure it was heart wrenching and it was very difficult to pinpoint where the problem was but actually i was the problem i hadn't done enough planning for my business and i wasn't leading well because there wasn't a clear plan around what it is that we were trying to do that was much bigger than us just servicing the clients i am a big believer that obstacles are presented to show you opportunity for me it was the opportunity to really get back to the drawing board and start planning and because i did that at that point i can safely say i am great at strategic planning for business and i now use that experience to help other women to plan better for their businesses therefore find their own uh, emancipation and autonomy for their lives when you started your business at a young age do you fall oh you were going for every opportunity and it went well but it got to a point where you felt like you had too much on your plate that's correct because there will always be opportunity but you need to be clear you need to be clear okay, okay. about what you are trying to do you know having a core purpose for a business is what will 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 push you through the difficult times it's easy right when you have opportunity and you're making money and people are calling you but when difficulty hits the purpose for the business is what will keep you moving forward it's what will encourage you to get up the following morning and keep trying it's what will encourage you to go back and 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 hire people again when you've had terrible experiences having purpose vision mission which are terms that are used very loosely when we think about business planning those are the things that will be the reason for you to get up when business is not doing well so it's so important it's not only about chasing opportunity it's about aligning with a vision that is bigger than just you um and 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 i find that a lot of businesses that are positioned in that manner are the businesses that triumph through difficult times there's a study that came out in 2020 that looked at the business that were the businesses that were able to push through uh 2020 and it's the businesses that went back to the purpose right it's the businesses that uh, were able to still engage and connect with their consumer even when their consumer couldn't buy their services because there was something that they always believed in beyond the product that they were selling that connected them to their consumer and their community that's really really powerful um and you have two businesses you're also an entrepreneur so your days are probably busy what does a typical day in your week look like and do you have a day to day routine i do or you already have a set routine i have a day to day routine and i'm big i'm very kind to myself adrian you know i i i i i'm not a big believer in being too busy i do have um ox right in my graph where there is a lot of business but i try to um create uh pockets of downtime in the day so i don't wait till the weekend if for instance i'm having a day where i'm feeling um, quite exhausted mentally i call myself the nap queen you know i take a 1 mm-hmm. hour 30 minute nap and that will always work for me and i'm very fortunate that i don't struggle to to sleep you know if i'm taking a nap i'm out in 5 minutes and after an hour and 30 minutes i can be up you know so i'm a big believer in the balance between work and wellness i wake up every morning to a morning routine the first thing i do when i wake up is read a book i time myself so i will literally time myself for 30 minutes i'll read for 30 minutes i'll get out of bed go brush my teeth come back to my room and i'll meditate for about 20 minutes when i'm done meditating i'll go out make my coffee i'll open my laptop i journal on my laptop i use an app called day one I'll open my laptop and just uh journal. And when I say journal, I use a technique, a different technique than just looking through my day. I particularly just write whatever comes to mind and even then I'll time myself 10 minutes, 20 minutes and I'll just type for that 10 minutes, 20 minutes. What that helps me figure out is what is actually going on in my mind. So it's almost like a brain dump, you know. I do a brain dump for 20 minutes and when I'm done, I will then get started with my day. 
in the evenings i try and wrap up my day around six if there's a lot of work it can go up until nine but i try not to work beyond 9 p.m and believe me i had days when i was working till midnight 1 a.m i used to be those crazy people but i'm not anymore um if i'm really really busy i wrap up my day at nine and uh, i would have eaten already because i don't eat after eight um and then i exercise sometimes at 9 p.m i prefer to exercise in the evening i'm trying to change it to the mornings i really struggle with the morning um but i'll normally like exercise come downstairs take a shower and then i will um do yoga before i sleep you know i stretch in the evening before i sleep and then i'll get to bed and i'll read for another 30 minutes so i try and read for about an hour a day um it's very very helpful for me to just get out get my mind out of the you know the rush of the work uh, and all the stuff that needs to be done and just back into easing back into sleep and in the morning i ease into my day so that's that's particularly how my day looks sometimes by midday if all my work is done because in every day every day i go in with a goal right i know the one thing the one major thing i need to accomplish for the day and it's normally deep work right whether it's a strategy i need to finish or it's a pitch that i need to complete and submit all the big work i normally plan like maybe three big wins in a day and if i finish by by midday i will stop working and um i will use the rest of my the day to just either connect with myself or connect with my family um so that's where also planning um comes into play right if i am clear about what i need to accomplish in the day once i've accomplished it then i will be able to take a break and not feel anxiety around stuff that needs to be done so um that's particularly how i navigate my days you know i try to be very very intentional about the work that i do and i don't overwork myself and when there is a lot of work to get done i will get it done but it's not culture for me to be extremely busy all the time it's it's so, just not it's not healthy you spoke about being intentional do you feel that your work ethic has been instrumental in your entrepreneurial success absolutely absolutely i think it's it's just very important to be able to especially when you're working with teams and you have partners and you have stakeholders you need to develop trust you need to build trust and a lot of times people will say someone has a good work ethic because they are working hard i don't think i don't believe that a good working work ethic is working hard a good work ethic is about doing what you said you're going to do at the time that you said you're going to do it and building that trust with your stakeholders whether that is employees whether that is clients that's a good work ethic it's showing up the way you promised you would show up it's not sleeping at 5 a.m. and waking up at 8 a.m. that is unhealthy i repeat that is unhealthy yeah. and very unkind <laughs> to a body that carries you on a day-to-day -day basis so i do believe that i have a good work ethic because i will deliver on what i promise to deliver i will work hard i will plan as much as i uh, need to plan to get any job done and over the years adrian i've become um quite clear about the opportunities that are aligned to um my values and my purpose you know i have a brief for instance a, an opportunity that i got to speak and i looked at it i called a couple of people and i made a decision that i was not going to go after it because it was very clear to me that it wasn't aligned to the kind of work that i want to do and it might seem like liberty to some you know it might seem like well maybe you are making a lot of money and that's why you can make those decisions that's not true you know i am not a person who i i guess I, i i'm not greedy you know i know how much i need to to live well and um once i reach that mark anything else beyond that is bliss right that's what you you yeah. you can afford yourself by also being intentional about what your number is what your living well number is if you want to create wealth then that's okay be clear that that's your wealth number it's not necessarily your living well number so living my living well number affords me then the opportunity to say i'm going to be intentional about how i create wealth uh the world creation area is the area where i want to do impactful work that excites me um where i can call the big numbers because i know i'm going to deliver on them um so that's how i kind of look at my life you know uh, i have a good work ethic okay. but i don't i don't think a good work ethic is about being unkind to to my body being a successful entrepreneur and the month of to like you highlighted earlier you obviously get to communicate with different people from all walks of life and from what you've 
from your relationships with other people has that affected your approach to parenting Hmm, that's a good question that's a very good question i often think about um how i can set my kids up to survive in the world i think every parent thinks about that and um it's a it's a it's a it's a moving target for me in the sense that i often sit sometimes and i think but what makes me think i know what kind of world they'll be living in you know um what makes me think that they don't already have um the ability to navigate the world in 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 in, in some way their soul is already prepared for what they need to deliver i'm a, a a deeply spiritual person and i look at things um in a very spiritual way a lot of the times and that's why taking care of my my mind and my body is so important so that i can always align with with that spiritual realm of thinking and when it comes to children children are um, very interesting for me i always say to my friends when they try and control stuff that's happening around their children i always say you know i believe that children are full souls in a small body so even as you engage them you need to be very conscious of the fact that you are speaking to a fully developed soul that is in a, a small body you know so I in my relationship with my children allow them to teach me, you know, to show me where they need help. I know it sounds like a very <laughs> liberal way <laughs> of raising kids, but it's not liberal at all. I have rules, I have all of that. But when it comes to the big questions of life, you know, I'm very fortunate that I have emotionally intelligent kids who communicate very well, and I try and and kind of follow where their spirits is leading me you know so i mean my two kids are very different in even the ways that they are strong and um i try to approach them in 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 um very different ways to just be sure that i'm constantly hearing what their needs are from me as their mother so yes you know when you've had difficult situations and you've engaged with a lot of people around the world you kind of want to shape your kids to to fit into those situations but sometimes you need to leave the space for them to show you what the their part is um yeah i think that i, I hope I, i i gave you an answer to your question but i really love that question you did yes and you said you have a daughter does she also want to do what mom's doing Or ironically <laughs> ironically <laughs> she um just um we've been discussing her studying a fashion business um yeah. so not because I'm an entrepreneur in actual fact um uh, she is uh, she loves um fashion but not necessarily buying clothes or high end fashion she's a, she's more of a creative so she likes creating things you know so oh, designing she girl. loves designing she's the kid who will like when I'm taking out stuff from my wardrobe she wants to come and pick some things when i wake up in the, the the following morning like literally my clothes don't look like my clothes because she's cut them up and they look completely different <laughs> she's a, a total creative she went thrifting the other day she went to a thrift shop with her dad and she came back with amazing pieces so um she's talented in that regard that she she really can create beautiful um pieces now we're looking at how she can sell them because she also i recognize values independence she started getting like money from dad and family members and she says to me mama i actually really like having money i want to figure out how i can make more money you know cuz she was like if i have my own money That's then smart. i can do my own things she went online she was googling cuz she's 16 she was googling jobs that 16 year olds can do literally for the past two weeks she has been doing research around how she can make money as a 16 year old so i've started helping her with that process and also taking advantage of um potentially sharing some life lessons as um she's you know because she is concentrated and focused it's a good way uh the mind is 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 a sponge you know because she wants to learn so yeah i don't think she wants to be necessarily an entrepreneur her reasoning is very different she wants independence and she knows what she likes to do and she wants to figure out can she do what she loves and still make money from that so that she can be independent from from us i guess as her parents mm-hmm. so she really got her drive from mom it, it it could be but it looks so different with her adrian hey she's soft she's very feminine she's calm 
Um, she's the calmest person I know. I, I don't think anything can can really stress her. I think the house could be burning down and she'll be getting people out and saying, calm down, everything will be fine. Even when I'm stressed, if I have, for instance, an IG live and the signal is not good. I remember there was this particular interview I did and the signal wasn't good. And I sent her a text because she wasn't home. Well, she she sent me a text asking how I am. And I was like, oh, I'm not good. Just did an IG live, it was so horrible. I couldn't hear anything the person was saying. And she texts me back and she said, oh no, don't worry about it. I'm sorry that happened, but don't worry about it. I'm sure for a person who does as many IG lives as you do, one of them won't go particularly well. So it's okay. I'm sure people will understand. She's that girl about any situation. And you need those people around. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. If she was old enough, I'd literally hire her and make her my assistant because she also takes great (laughs) pictures, you know? She's helped me so much in 2020 when we had to do IG lives. Um, content that we're creating for clients and on the topic of family you grew up with your extended family and i believe that a good family unit really help in support of your goals and help with your vision and with that who are three people who have been influential to the misknown denim daddy that we see now I have great relationship with um, just uh, acquaintances and um, I, I'm going to particularly mention mentors as well. The first person that comes to mind who was an early influence in my life is my grandmother who was an entrepreneur herself. I didn't understand that she was an entrepreneur. You know, when you're young, I grew up in a small town and um, they had shops, yeah. and they had a hotel and all of these things. But for me, that's all I ever knew, right? So I didn't have a benchmark where I knew someone who was working and then I knew my grandmother and my family who were entrepreneurs. I lived a very sheltered um, life. My childhood was very protected and I appreciate it so dearly because it allowed me to be a child for a very long time. So my grandmother was um, just a, the, like she is the woman I want to become. I'm constantly trying to become. She was strong, she was beautiful. Um, she loved her family. She was extremely supportive to me. She made me believe that I was smart. To this day, I don't know if I even am. I just believe that I am because she believed <laughs> it so much. Um, so my early influences were definitely my grandmother and my grandfather. They were both entrepreneurs and uh, more my grandmother. The, the family was very matriarchal. I felt the strength of the woman in my family more than the strength of the man because I was so close to the woman. And um, after my grandmother, uh, the person I think of who has been quite impactful in in my development and growth um, as an entrepreneur is Oskido, you know? And it's always so strange because of, I guess, where people see me now, but I started working in entertainment and with celebrities. Oskido is um, the kindest, one of the kindest people I know. He gave me opportunity in a space where other women did not have the liberty to create the way that I did. You know, I recently had a conversation with uh, Zinke, the DJ, who's a great friend, and we were talking about the impact of Oscar in our lives and how women struggle to get opportunity and access because a lot of time men um, will, will, will make it an opportunity to really be predators to women when they can open the door. Oskido did that for us. With There was never a day, Adrian, where I felt uncomfortable around Oskido because he was a man. He gave me the, the runway yes. to create, to learn. He trusted me. He supported me. And beyond that, in observing him manage relationships around him, which were tough, you know, when you're, when you're working with creatives, it's all kinds of egos and it's just madness. I watched him navigate relationships business relationships and i learned so much about when to fight when not to fight when to stay when to walk away how to structure deals how to get in the room and be clear about what you want to get out he was a huge influence in how i got into the workplace because i I think working with him was actually the beginning of me really really working before i started my agency so He's another very, very important figure in my life. I'm trying to think of a person who has been instrumental in uh, my development, I think, as a a mom and as a family person. And it has to be my aunt, who's my father's sister. 
she uh because at some point i lost uh my father's my mother's side of the family and i had to stay with my father's side of the family she was always a person who encouraged um the importance of family she took me around introduced me to all the extended family members the cousins and if she hadn't done that i might have struggled um much more than i did uh with the loss of my uh of the family that particularly raised me so if i have to think about three people now and i know that i'm i'm missing a lot of other people adrian because there's so many people who have been impactful to my um growth mm-hmm. development and success but if i have to think of three people off the top of my head those are the ones that i think i can put forward i feel like maybe a skido he saw something in you that you hadn't seen and because of that he saw that if he assisted you if he showed you how to get around one day you could use that knowledge to also help someone like how you speak of your daughter wanting to do something similar you could empower someone like how he empowered you absolutely you know um Oscar's just mantra and and reason for being is helping people. She he has a big family. And if I could tell you even the way that he structured his own um his own money is is not for him. It's around his family. If if I could tell you the things that Oscar did for other people in the period that I worked with him, I just learned so much also about giving, you know, and and giving without the fear that you are losing something. Um giving even when you're in a position where you need, you know. He he's a phenomenal phenomenal human being and I always say to him, I wish um the there are books that are written about you and the kind of person that you are because you really are the epitome of the ideal human being in all your flaws and all the things that you do for other people in your life he's just uh, been such an exceptional um example and i'm very very fortunate to have had the opportunity to work with him and to still have him in my life to this day you know oscar is one of those people i can call any day um if literally i was stuck in the desert somewhere and i needed to make one phone call it probably be to him oh, and on the topic of celebrities Glamour South Africa described you as a serial entrepreneur who runs two successful businesses and that leads me to ask what keeps you going when things get tough I think I I'm I have a high level of self awareness Adrian I know that entrepreneurship is my path right beyond it being my path I just know that that is what that's what fuels me I I think it must be the same feeling as uh, an F1 race driver you know when you get in the car and you know that there's obstacles that you're going to face but the thrill of the drive is what really ramps you up it's just your fit, your, your makeup your mental makeup is um shines in that area i think for me i was very fortunate to recognize that very early i mean 25 uh, i was working before i started my first business but i knew i wasn't um I was in my best self in the workplace and when I started my first business with Sinclair which was the school I have never been so happy it you know when you when when you walk into a space and you know that's exactly where you need to be that's what entrepreneurship feels like to me the opportunity it affords me to create because cre- being in a space where I'm creating is 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 my 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 highest level of um spiritual experience that ability to create the ability to help others the ability to hire the ability to impact people's lives this is how i am made up to make impact and i think that awareness for me um and 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 it's very deep rooted in just knowing who i am is the thing that keeps me going there is no option but to make this work you know so that's that's the that's what keeps me going that's what um that's what keeps me moving forward. I, I mean, I know other people will think, "Oh, my family and all of those things." But let me tell you, Adrian, when things get rough and you're alone, the last people you're thinking about are uh, other people. You're just thinking about, "Why am I here? Yeah. Why did I choose this?" And you have those moments, right, where you just like, "Oh my gosh, I wish I could just be baking cakes and having someone taking care of me." But um even sometimes when I say that to my friends, my friends are just like, if you started baking cakes because someone was taking care of you you would start a cupcake business and you'd be selling those cakes so no it's not going to work you know so um that's 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 who i am and i think because i understand that i recognize that 
it's like being a it's, it's for me it's like being a girl like being a girl or being a boy or being gay you know i think you know when you talk about when you talk, when people natural. say you know when when you meet someone who's gay and they and you ask them how uh, when they knew and they're like i knew when i was three you know it's it's a similar feeling where you just know that this yeah. is what you're meant to be doing or this is who you are that's that's really powerful and where can our listeners connect with your content well online? i am on instagram a lot and um my instagram handle is at nomdeni and um where i share uh, a, a lot about agenda woman is on the agenda woman page and that is at agenda woman and that is plural it's m-e-n at the end not m-a-n and um, we will be doing a lot more blogging on the agenda woman website so that is www.agendawomen.com those are the three areas that i am primarily focused on right now over time we will be sharing a lot more content on linkedin and twitter we're still really thinking about whether facebook is a space that we want to play in but um, those are the areas where you can connect with us we also have a pinterest uh, page that we just developed so all of these spaces it is agenda women uh, thank you so much and as we're about to round off as an influencer and a role model to many young girls from all around the world what advice would you give any young girls that are trying to pursue a similar career path as yours hmm. be committed you know i think one of the the ways that you are able to remain to, to be visible to be memorable for people to trust you is to show up i think maybe that's the right word i would encourage young women to show up showing up takes a lot but it is worth it in the end for me showing up is making sure if you have an opportunity you do the research you do the planning you sit down you commit you're intentional you are in the moment you are present so that when the opportunity comes you are prepared right and a lot of people say that's luck and i've had a lot of that in my life i've had luck because i prepare and i prepare and i prepare and i prepare some more so that when i walk into the room i have the confidence to deliver whatever it is that i need to demonstrate to my partners you know entrepreneurship is about uh, being driven by purpose it is about the, the the impact you can make in other people's lives through employment it is about um being a valuable stakeholder to your client i think if you understand these three things you then center your your days and your being around making sure that these three parts are taken care of you can always be a better leader no matter where you are to your employees you can always be a better stakeholder to your partners but by always sharing um information in areas where they might not be looking you know um you can always be a better human being by being clear around how you want your success your your um ability to to grow um can impact your community that that those are the pillars that drive me adrian you know my ability to impact my community um being a uh, valuable stakeholder and being a good leader to the people that work with me so i would advise that anyone who wants to pursue this path understands also the responsibility of sitting in these positions you know when a client hires you they are trusting you you know to be a partner in their business when someone is working for you you are not just responsible for them you're responsible for their family you know through that salary that you give them and through the growth opportunities that you can present to them and when you become successful you are responsible for um bringing other people up in your community these are the three pillars that i think drive um just my 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 happiness you know and my contentment and my 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 place in the world that's really good and i feel like a lot of people when they start a lot of people are just driven by money at the start which isn't the best motivator and i think the last question i'll ask you in today's podcast is in all of my podcasts i have a signature question which is always what does happiness mean to you it's so simple adrian happiness for me is peace of mind you know a lot of unhappiness is driven by 
anxiety and inability to find comfort with where you are and an ability to to find stillness i meditate a lot and the reason i meditate is so that i am always present in every moment even through challenging times so for me happiness is peace of mind if 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 my mind is okay you know because the mind is where a lot of um a, a lot of battles are lost you know so that's why if if i am done with work at at midday i will stop because it's so important for me that i get to appreciate um life as it's happening you know i don't wait until i get to a particular moment to then be happy i'm happy every day gratitude is a big ingredient to a still and peaceful mind i am very clear that even though i have big goals i have reached the goals i had 10 years ago you know I had an assistant who said to me, you know, sometimes we get so caught up with the next thing, we forget that we actually get everything that we pray for. It's not always at the time that we think we 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 are going to get it, but eventually you do. Imagine that time you you first wanted a car and how bad you wanted it. Did you remember when you eventually got your car 5 years, 6 years later? So, I'm a big believer that prayers are answered. and um we need to cultivate a uh, ritual of gratitude in order to develop a still and peaceful mind and if you can do that then you will be happy even with 10 rands in your bank account because you will know that you are on the pursuit of always getting better but even where you are you are better than someone else already with that I'd just like to say it's been an honor to have you on our podcast today. I wish you all the best in everything you do and that all your goals and dreams might be reached. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much Adrian. Now. I wish you luck with this podcast as well. Um I don't know what your dreams are or your ambitions are with the podcast, but um I do wish you luck. I hope it becomes everything that you hope for and thank you for having me again. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you enjoyed it.